Ewan. Hey. What video game deserves a second chance? Well, I was thinking today, it's a bit of a scorcher, right, in the northeast of England. It's about, what is it, is it about 27 degrees Where's right now? Yeah, Probably internal body temperature of like 500 degrees for the Americans in California being like, that's like baby temperature. It's really warm for us, okay. So I was thinking of, when we said, you know, games people dislike that deserve a second chance, I was like, hmm, I've already got hot stuff mm. on the brain. Check and you know what game's hot? And it's set in the deep south, which is notorious for hot, sweaty vibes. What game is Mafia that? Mafia 3. Hey, Mafia 3 is a banger of a game. And even though, yes, the open world elements, they kind of are like just open world the game. Um, the narrative of that game is a thing of beauty. It's a beautifully realized historical environment. Probably one of the most historically authentic games I've ever played. And beyond just the story as well, the gameplay kicks ass. The gunplay in this thing is brutal fierce. The knife combat is one of the most brutal I've ever had in the game as well. Um, Lincoln Clay, fantastic protagonist. And yeah, just a fantastic title that I really think kind of got slept on. And the Mafia series as a whole, Will always be kind of like remembered for missed potential, I feel. You know, people really like Mafia 2, which is fair enough. It is deeply flawed though. And the Mafia remake that Hangar 13 did the other year, that's class, but again, it's not it's not fully realized. Whereas Mafia 3, even though it, you know, there are some issues, like there were a lot of bugs when it came out, there are some graphical tears here and there, there's some missing features from Mafia 2 that mean that, you know, some people kind of looked really down upon it. But overall, it's just this is a great example of what what gaming can do when you have people that like you know put a lot of research into a given historical time period and just just rip lead rip ass with the gameplay. That's what I'm saying. The Mafia Three is a great game. Whips ass. Soundtrack people say too. they're sick of whip whipping. Whip, soundtrack Soundtrack's good. So good. The soundtrack right. also whips tremendous amount of ass. But yeah, I'm I'm getting the heat madness, man. Um, I think if we wait here long enough, one beady sweat of sweat is gonna just come down right here and it's gonna... <laughs> how long do you wanna wait? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good idea. GB, Josh Brown, Josh Brown, Josh Brown, GB. What's the Aye. game with the second chance, eh? Well, you know how Sony only make bangers, Scott Telford. <laughs> Days Gone is one of them, right? People say Days Gone isn't a banger. It kind of is. It didn't start that way, admittedly. A yeah. lot of bugs at launch. A pretty crappy character in Deacon St. John, as he's known. <laughs> but over the course of that game, after its dreadful eight-hour introduction, it becomes really good. Like, this is a long, long post-apocalyptic tale that takes a long time to get going. Use that word a lot. Yeah. But once you get into the nitty-gritty of it, and you get into the stuff that was promised by the trailers, you know, those mad zombie hordes that you end up fighting. It all kind of clicks and it becomes a really immersive open world game slash survival game as well with a really good uh, loop and some really interesting characters that come in late in the day. And honestly, one of like the most immersive um, open world sandboxes that I've encountered in quite some time. Like, I think it's Oregon that's uh, detailed there mm. and like that just kind of lush woodland that's brought to life there is like a joy to explore. I'm an absolute sucker for post-apocalyptic games and this kind of ticked all the boxes. And whilst it's not on the level of, you know, The Last of Us or God of War or that top tier Sony stuff, it's really good and it's a shame that it's not gonna get a sequel because what's there is promising and it could be even better in the future. So come on, Sony, give me a sequel to that and give me a sequel to the Order 1886 while yeah. you're on. Why not? Yeah. Why not, eh? Yeah. While Straight we're here. That, man. <laughs> Let me tell you one lovely, beautiful game. It's right there, Brutal Legend. That game, the most mismarketed game, maybe in gaming history, where they double fine put this whole love letter to heavy metal and hard rock and all these different people that are in it, as you know, from Judas Priest to Lita Ford, whatever. This whole and Jack Black, I should probably mention him as well. This whole sort of packaged up idea of just heavy metal ephemera made playable, and then EA was on the marketing team and they went, well, they can't possibly market the RTS elements of the game. Let's take the opening segment and pretend that's the entire thing and it very much is not. I was one of the many millions of people that contributed to this game being a sales bomb because they played it, did the immaculate opening level and then went, what the hell is the rest of this? Because it was not in the marketing whatsoever. But if you go into Brutal Legend with fresh eyes and a fresh life, it's good. I would say that the various ideas that are at the heart of this, the idea of just having RTS gameplay, just twinned with a hack and slash thing where you're zooming in and becoming the cursor and clearing our various enemies yourself is a really cool idea. Backed with one of the greatest soundtracks in gaming history, literally 
literally. It's awesome. The amount of money they threw at this thing is brilliant. And you get to play as Jack Black the entire way through. So I absolutely love Brutal Legend. I didn't used to. I was just like you and you and all of you. But I went back to it during the pandemic and it's brilliant. Now they've patched it. It runs beautifully and smoothly. I can't recommend it enough. I genuinely cannot recommend it enough. Go play it, Ewan, right uh, now. Right now? Yeah, oh. do it. Hey, Joe. Hello. You're in the hot seat. I am in the hot seat, the very some, hot seat. Some hot takes. Very hot takes. Warm my soul with what video game was the site that you think deserves a second chance? Well, so you guys have looked at this on a bit of a macro level, you know, games that no one liked or, or a lot of people disliked that actually we should all have another look at. Well, I'm taking this down to a, a personal level, a little personal journey of mine, you know? Um, uh, so a game that deserved a second chance by me. I am not afraid to admit that I was wrong. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a big poo all over Alan Wake. Oh, no! I... <laughs> and you guys were all so angry with me, right? Yeah. And I thought, I thought, I must have, I must be missing something here. I must be missing something, you know? Maybe I just need to to give this that that second go. So I restarted the chapter. You know, it turned out I'd actually accidentally put it on hard mode, which might not have helped. Um, but I, I powered through it, and and you know what? I had a good time. Yay! And, and I, it's not, I'm not going to say it's unimpeachable. Like, the gameplay is still pretty clunky, and like, it's got its issues. Like, the, those first two chapters are miserable when literally all you're doing is... No, 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 that's what I'm saying. The, those first two chapters where you're pointing that, chapter. when you're pointing that flashlight and firing that, and that's all you're doing, not great. But as soon as you get to pick up some flares and start dropping them and being a little more tactical, and then well, picking up some flare gun ammo, that's what we said, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I hadn't got those yet. I was literally just had a flashlight. Oh. This is it, you know. And and I was just, it's it's a it's a bit slow for its combat to click. But then once it did click, I was like, you know what? I'm having fun here. And the There's Stephen King style narration as well. I think that, you know, I'd been used to Control and how that kind of handled its atmosphere and I was expecting kind of that from Alan Wake as well. But then, as you say, he's meant to be Stephen King, it's all sort of meant to be a little bit camp. And once I realised that, I was like, yeah, I was just completely wrong here, wasn't I? Like, Alan Wake has the source, Joe. Yeah, Alan, Alan Wake, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, especially, you know who I really liked? Was that Barry guy? Oh, um, Barry. You know, I just thought like Barry turns up and he's like Barry. he's like this obnoxious like publicist in a puffer jacket. I thought, ah, oh, that guy's gonna die pretty quick, isn't he? And then like he turns out to be your best mate, and he's there with you when you're on that stage. When you get to that stage, and it, is it the old gods of Asgard? Is that their name? And you get that you get that whole number with all the fireworks going off. I thought, ah, oh, yeah, I'm glad he's all shouted at me, you know.